Hi everyone, I'm Mark Schasser again. I'm here in Melbourne this time, uh, Melbourne, Australia, with the great Klaus Visser. And we just had lunch and, and we thought it would be an opportunity to talk a little bit about Gustav Lorentzen. Because for those of you that may have uh, follow us on LinkedIn, um, this story that I posted a couple of weeks ago about Gustav Lorentzen has proven to be quite popular with uh, nearly 8,000 views and many, many comments. So we figured this would be a great opportunity to hear from Klaas himself because Klaas knows, knew Gustav Lorentzen from many years ago and, and, and maybe share some, uh, some great wisdom that he, he got from the great man. So over to you, Klaas. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I had the good fortune to work with Gustav Lorentzen from 1976 to 1994, the year he departed this world. This world. Um, he taught me quite a number of things. Uh, in a technical sense, he taught me uh, that CO2 is probably the best refrigerant for all, all applications in the world. Uh, and this is slowly coming through with many more applications happening day to day. He originally patented the uh, mobile air conditioning CO2 system for the cooling and heating of cars in 1993, and it's still not quite true, but it's happening. Um, he also taught me modesty uh, when I suggested that he should hang his 26 honorary doctorates and major prizes certificates on the walls. He said there was no need to be ostentatious. Wonderful man, uh, great leader, and uh, I hope that all his enormous foresight uh, will come to fruition in the not too distant future. Because CO2 holds the key to a lot of environmental problems, uh, both in terms of an alternative refrigerant without global warming potential or ozone depletion potential, but also because of its multifunction characteristic, it can effectively heat and cool buildings, uh, generate hot water, uh, and so on and so on. Um, the big problem we're having to date is the availability of large enough compressors. Um, we need compressors about 10 to 300 times the size that we have today for large projects particularly in heating and cooling, uh, district heating and cooling systems. In China, there are now projects being planned for 22,000 square kilometer district heating and cooling systems. So, enormously bright future. And uh, I have no doubt that with all the trials and tribulations and resistance from various uh, strong interest, interest groups who have the capacity to buy senators some in some place in the world uh, that uh, we will get there. So you're still very hopeful. Oh, I'm absolutely convinced. And Gustav showed you what was possible, and you've been working in that now for decades. And you, you now, well, now that you can share some of your experience and wisdom with the next generation. Yeah, sure. Well, the, the interesting thing is, of course, that the it took me until about. Um, five years ago to actually finally confirm that Gustav was right across the board. Okay. He'd given me the concepts, but I, I'm sort of a, a guy that says, show me first. Uh, and uh, it took me until that time to uh, confirm that the potential is there. And all we needed to do was to adapt one technique from uh, industrial ammonia refrigeration and that is evaporative uh, condensing and gas cooling. Okay. Thank you, Klaus. My pleasure. Always a pleasure.